Hello. So today let's read the third lesson from the supplementary reading. A day's wait. He came into the room to shut the windows while we were still in bed, and I saw he looked ill. He was shivering. His face was white, and he walked slowly, as though it ached to move. What's the matter, Scats? I've got a headache. You better go back to bed. No, I'm all right. You go to bed. I'll see you when I'm dressed. But when I came downstairs, he was dressed, sitting by the fire, looking very sick and miserable. Boy of nine years. When I put my hand on his forehead, I knew he had fever. You go up to bed, I said. You are sick. I am all right, he said. When the doctor came, he took the boy's temperature. What is it? I asked him. One hundred and two. Downstairs, the doctor left three different medicines in the different colored capsu- capsules. with instructions for giving them one was to bring down the fever another to purgative the third wo- to overcome an acid condition the germs of influenza can only exist in an acid condition he explained he seemed to know all about the influenza and said there was nothing to worry about it the fever did not go above 104 degrees this was a light epidemic or flu and there was no danger if you avoided pneumonia back in the room i wrote the boy's temperature down and made a note of the time to give the various capsules do you want me to read you all right if you want to said the boy his face was very white and there were dark areas under his eyes he lay still in the bed and seemed very detached from what was going on i read aloud from howard's howard pyle's book of pirates but i could see he was not following what i was reading how do you feel scats i asked him just the same so far he said I sat at the foot of the bed and read to myself while I waited for it to be time to give another capsule. It would have been natural for him to go to sleep, but when I looked up, he was looking at the foot of the bed, looking very strangely. Why don't you try to go to sleep? I'll wake you up for the medicine. I'd rather stay awake. After a while he said to me you don't have to stay in here with me papa if it bothers you it doesn't bother me no i mean you don't have to stay if it's going to bother you i thought perhaps he was a little light headed and after giving him the prescribed capsules at 11 o'clock i went out for a while it was a bright cold day the ground covered with a sleet that had frozen so that it seemed as if all the bare trees the bushes the cut brush and all the grass and the bare ground had been varnished with ice i took the young irish setter for a little walk up the road and along a frozen creek but it was difficult to stand or walk on the glassy surface and the red dog slipped and slithered and i fell twice hard once dropping my gun and having it slide away over the ice we flushed a covey of quail under a high clay bank with overhanging brush and i killed two as they went out of the sight over the top of the bank some of the covery lit in trees but most of them scattered into brush piles and 
it was necessary to jump on the ice coated mounds of brush several times before they would flush coming out while you were poised unsteadily on the icy springy brush they made difficult shooting and i killed two missed five and started back pleased to have found a cove close to the house and happy there were so many left to find on another day at the house they said the boy had refused to let anyone come into the room you can't come he said you mustn't get what i have i went up to him and found him in exactly the position i had left him white faced but with the tops of his cheeks flushed by the fever staring still as he had stared at the foot of the bed i took his temperature what is it something like a hundred i said it was 102 and 4 tenths i was it was a hundred and two he said who said so the doctor your temperature is all right i said it's nothing to worry about i don't worry he said but i can't keep from thinking don't think i said just take it easy i am taking it easy he said and looked straight ahead he was evidently holding tight on to himself about something take this with water do you think it will do any good of course it will i sat down and opened the pirate book and commenced to read but i could see he was not following so i stopped about what time do you think i am going to die he asked what about how long will it be before i die you aren't going to die what's the matter with you oh yes i am i heard him say a uh, 102 people don't die with a fever of 102 that's a silly way to talk i know they do at school in france the boys told me you don't live 44 degrees i've got a 102 he had been waiting to die all day ever since 9 o'clock in the morning you poor scats i said poor old scats it's like miles and kilometers you aren't going to die that's a different thermometer on that thermometer 37 is normal on this kind it's 98 are you sure absolutely i said it's like miles and kilometers you know like how many kilometers we make when we do 70 miles in a car oh he said but his gaze at the foot of the bed relaxed slowly the hold over himself relaxed too finally and the next day it was very slack and he cried very easily at little things that were of no importance thank you